another Sunday morning sketch. This is Eric Whalen from Super Secret Project X, and uh, this morning I took a request from my wife, and I am going to do Toothless, which, unlike the apparent streak of gnarly old dudes I have been doing, is going to be a nice change. So. I have been there, huh? I'm sore, just cleaning the bathtub. <laughs> my favorite is when I uh, threw my back out picking up a sock, mm. and even better, threw my back out. Um, I think I was turning to crack an egg to make breakfast that was the mo that's that's when i felt like the most fragile i've ever felt i was oh that's that's a bad one too oh my 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 favorite my favorite stupid thing that i i'm afraid of because i'm getting older is you know when you get those pounding headaches mm -hmm. and your head just feels like it's all like you know, and then you cough or something Oh, yeah, and you think that you're, like, one of the arteries and your head is going to burst? No. Oh, yeah, you're going to start, like, smelling toast or something? <laughs> now, imagine that in your gut, and that's what menstrual cramps feels like. <laughs> oh, wow, that's that's a whole lot of suck. Yeah, yeah. at least the ones that I would get. Yeah. <laughs> For about 24 hours straight, that was, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> every month. <laughs> ah. Yeah, that's not awesome. Nope. Let's hope for the... There isn't a good option there. No. No, there's not a good option there. It's, I was about to say, let's hope for the... And then I was going to go with the, the, the least of the bad. And then I thought, I, I don't have... I, I don't have anything I can act, actually honestly say here that... Um, hmm. Because no one knows what tub crust actually is. We can assume, but we don't know. A little bit of everything. It's... it's, it's that's probably why my I, I, uh, my skin just crawled just slightly there. So. <laughs> I guess that's where you and I differ. Like stuff like that doesn't really bother. Well, it's not that it, it really deeply bothers me, but just enough where you just kind of you, you consider it and you go like, yeah. <laughs> well, we all gotta find out where the sausage is made at some point. Right? Mm, it's true. <laughs> Darn sausage. Tasty, tasty. <laughs> that darn sausage. Sausage. Oh, so far, no weird hives breaking out, so that's good. Good. <laughs> it's always good to know. Occasionally, whatever cleaning oh. product he gets on me. We have some ladies this morning. Hello. Yeah, we got uh, Jen and Emily. Hi, Jen. Hi, Em. How's it going, guys? Uh, just so you know, I don't normally look at the screen too much. I'm usually just drawing, so... <laughs> and hopefully we don't talk about things that are going to embarrass us too badly in the future. Though I'm so, yeah, I'm certain we've <laughs> hit a couple of them over the last couple Sunday morning sketches. That... Hey, Em, how does, the, how does the convention go? 
You're, you're going to have to actually check that yourself. I'm not going <laughs> to see it. So. <laughs> oh, I don't want to look at our people see what they are. <laughs> For some reason, I didn't think we'd get anybody this morning. It's kind of nice. Oh, hey! Oh, my wife just joined. <laughs> hey, honey, guess what? You just, you just, oh, wait, I just realized I was being dumb. Oh, dumb Eric. Hmm. When I try to join in, um, it won't let me play the video, and then it plays the video, and then it just does the uh, loading, not Lotus Bloom thing. Hmm. Is it buffering? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Did that last week also. Buffering. What now? John. What? Let's get you John today. The one you wanted me to? <gasps> Yay! Oh. Yeah, I'm doing the thing. I gave you something to I, I wasn't feeling the Iron Giant this morning. I have to be kind of in a particular mood to do mechanical stuff. It's, it's fun under certain circumstances. But you have to kind of go zen because you just have to sit there and really, really work all the little um, the, the, the perspective and stuff. And it's just some mornings I don't think I can handle that. I have had other times where I just sat there for long periods just, you know, I'm going to put a little nut here, you know, just... Okay. We can do that.
That's all right, don't worry about it. Josh popped on for a second. I can't seem to get on to say hello to him. So, hi, Josh. <laughs> oh, Josh. Yes. Oh, okay.
Hmm. What? Well, this is the video of all it. The baby deer, kittens, baby skunk, and baby raccoon all hanging out together. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a whole lot of warm and fluffy going on there. Pokemon was only that kind. You should, you should hug small animals. You shouldn't <laughs> capture them and force them to fight to the death. Meanwhile, living in your pocket. <laughs> they Digimon got it right. They hugged them and then they fought beside their buddies. Yeah, Dig Digimon was a little, little bit more uh, humane to their monsters <laughs> than Pokemon. Pokemon was created by a jerk. See that. That's what happens. <laughs> That's how you know humans suck. <laughs> because Pokemon, the monsters came into their world and they captured them and trained them and made them fight. Digimon, they went into the monsters' world. The monsters accepted them and said, "Hey, you guys want to be buds? Yeah, let's do this." <laughs> it's very hard to argue, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Digimon, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, great show. Didn't really care where they went. With, like the what season three and four didn't care where they went with it, but the original ones were pretty neat. Well, it was just messed up enough that I thought it was pretty entertaining. But it's kind of the problem with that kind of uh, kind of entertainment. And Pokemon and a couple of the others act, act kind of the same way. So then after a while, I'm like, okay, th the weird novelty has worn off. Uh, I need some, some better plot and character stuff now. And that's usually when I, I lose interest. Is when I go, oh, they're they're not they're not going any further with this. It's like, oh, okay, that, that's cool. I'll, I'll just you know let other people watch it. But it's not that I have to have that. It's just I get bored, you know. You're like, oh, they're the. They're the same characters. Oh, oh. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> they're, they're, oh, they're, they're still doing the same thing week after week. Oh, oh. That's cool. <laughs> you know, you're like, mm -hmm. Neat. I thought it was kind of cool that later they grew the characters up. Mm -hmm. Unlike Pokemon, which, you know, eternally has children enslaving poor animals to fight to the death decade after decade. You just call it like pocket slaves or something. You know, you just end up going like I think like Pikachu and Ash are like the only two friends. The, the rest of them are just like these horrible little monster children. Well, it, I think from what I understand, and pardon me, all of you, did you or the Pokemon fans who I may not know this because I don't know much Pokemon lore. Mm. Um, Pikachu, he doesn't want to evolve because he wants to stay and be with Ash. Like, he he. He just wants to do what the masses telling him to do. He doesn't want to grow and expand as a person. I find that to be sad. So sad. I <laughs> okay, there we go. I, I thought Toothless didn't have anything out of the, the underside of him. It's just more of that pebble pattern. Yeah. I, I was like, going like I'm sitting there just dying going like, wait a second. What's What's on the underside of his... Yeah, you know, but I couldn't remember if there was like a, like a little seam running down or if there was, you know, because you know, reptiles sometimes have those. He's all smooth. Yeah, yeah.
Mm. A bunch of people in a business office, um, just like Germany or someplace, there's a crow hanging outside the window ledge. All right. He's kind of tapping at the window, and right. they're like, "Does he? what does he want? So they're like, maybe he wants a snack, because they're like kind of having like little bread and all that. So the lady opens up the window and puts like a few bread crumbs out, and he doesn't leave. He's not eating the bread. And so like, what? What does he want? So they open up the window for him, and he just kind of hops in, looks around, and sees the one shiny thing, the spoon inside the teacup that's sitting off to the side. He grabs the spoon and takes off. <laughs> and he wanted the shiny thing. <laughs> Crows like shiny. That's awesome. <laughs> That's what you get for letting me in! <laughs> you invited me into your household. <laughs> now yeah. you must pay the price. <laughs> Yoink, got your spoon. Something about the sound a duck makes, it's just ear piercing. I mean, not like loud, but just enough that it just seems to like jab you right in the ear. You know, like it's just. It's very attention getting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's. The word obnoxious is not exactly the right word, and neither is piercing, but. I love it. I love, like, when they're doing their little, like, little talkies. I oh, love yeah. that sound. It sounds so cute. It's not like they're angry and just like muttering under Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not saying anything bad about it. I'm just going, there's just something, you know, very attention getting about that particular sound. <laughs>
really cute. <laughs> well, he's he's a he's a cute character until he turns scary. <laughs> I give DreamWorks some credit. They, um, and I kind of wish that they would keep doing it. They kind of lightened it up on some of the later dragon stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, man, when the dragons were scary, they were they were legitimately like feral kind of scary, which was really cool. Well, I mean that whole entire scene out of uh, How to Train Your Dragons too. That was. Just be specific. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Out of that whole movie, that one scene, you know the one I'm talking about? <laughs> um, where, because uh, I don't want to, if anybody, well, I don't know, if anybody hasn't seen it by the now, to them. Yeah, it, um, it's been out for a long time. When uh, uh, Toothless goes, actually gets controlled by the... Oh, yeah. And, and kills, kills uh, uh, Hiccup's dad. Yeah. And that entire scene, I mean, when, just the look on his face and when he went... Full dragon. Mm. <laughs> and that was just like, wow. <laughs> well, I liked a lot of what they did in the second movie. It it did feel like they pulled their punches, even though they were, because they did some like really heavy stuff at moments, but then they pulled their punches at the same time. And I'm going like, I'm like guys, you know, <laughs> it's 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 you 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 socked the audience really good a couple times. And then in some ways you sort of softened it. In other ways they did it just right. It was, it was kind of, um, it felt like it was just almost there. Like they were almost competing with Pixar. Almost. But they, then they pulled their punches and it was like, uh... I think they did so because of the whole thing with the whole uh, parent death thing. I don't think they wanted the people and were the kids mainly to be too messed up to enjoy the movie. So they had to make it a bit more soft. Yeah, but it still happened. That's what I don't understand is why would you soften anything even though it happened? If it happened, it happened. If it's in the story, it's in the story. It's it's like the one, um, those two really big like behemoth dragon, sea dragon kind of. Uh, one of them clearly gutted the other one with his horns. But, and I'm not saying they should have shown it, but they did. They softened a lot of what was going on, including there was not even goo on the one ramming drag it just you you you're like okay you you're trying to camouflage what just happened i'm going like you no 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 if something happened it happened don't do it and then pull it well, that's, that, that's what always got me about that i was like mm. well with the pg especially as especially an animated pg movie there's a certain you can't show stuff like that I like a pg-13 then well, story's more important than some irrelevant rating system well, tell that to the investors, unfortunately. They're the ones that's paying all the money. <laughs> and they're not going to get their return if a supposed animated movie is PG-13. That's normally was a PG or a G. Lame. Yeah. We that's... need to get rid of the rating system. It's just doing nothing but hurting art at this point. Yeah. Well, in the future, it'll probably get rearranged like it has been getting over the past 20 years or so. I mean, every 10 years, it seems to go through another shift of some sort. I mean... Uh, what was considered a soft R is now considered PG-13. So, <laughs> I mean, we have uh, people swearing in PG movies now. So, yeah, it'll change. I'm not sure if it'll change that direction, like showing full-out gore and crap no, in PG-13. I'm, I'm not saying gore. I'm not saying that there needed to be gore. I'm saying that they did what they could to, you know, it was obvious what happened. Mm -hmm. It was so obvious what happened. So, I don't know, they, 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 they did the tasteful thing in not showing it, but then they didn't show it, and they softened stuff on top of it. You, you know, it was just kind of like, guys, you, you're, you're protecting the kids. Yep. Stop protecting children. The children can understand that stuff. Well, that's the thing. But if you keep protecting them, they're just going to grow up to be people who can't handle reality. Well, it's not the fact of them protecting kids. It's the mm. fact that they don't want parent, angry parents. Because, yeah, there are going to be kids who are going to see that and going to start screaming and crying. And then you're going to have angry parents who are going to say, well, why wasn't this told to me that this was going to be... It's the same thing while you have uh, parents who got angry because uh, they took their kid to a Deadpool movie. Yeah, but those are stupid people. Well, that's what I'm just saying. I mean, not in 
insulting and telling people that they're stupid, but... No, they took a kid to a rated R movie and then was wondering why they were watching a rated R movie. That's dumb. Well, yeah, that, um, that, yeah. I was talking about as far as, like, having their, like, they're doing it for the sake of not having angry parents breathing down their throat and, once again, losing out on investments. That's just the way it is when it comes to animated movies and business. Parents need to do their jobs. That's that's not the job of the rating system or the movie makers. That's the that's the parents' job. It's like there's stuff that we grew up on now that was considered just kid stuff that's now too hard. I mean, Rats of Nim. There's 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 like knife stabbing and blood and that's what I mean. Is in the Rats of Nim, uh, the one guy got stabbed and there was blood on the knife. Mm-hmm. Okay, it wasn't horrible. Like, oh, like scarring, but it was like, whoa, okay, yeah, something just happened. This is a real moment. And that's what I'm talking about with the dragons in the second How to Train Your Dragon movie, where the one gutted the other one. I'm not saying I wanted to see entrails dragged out. I'm just simply saying that if they could get away with a little bit of blood on a knife and rats of Nim 20-some years ago, they can get away with a little bit of dragon goo on the horn. That's all I'm saying. You know, and it's like, that, that to me is frustrating. Unfortunately, they're not, they're making it all ages and therefore not making it directly for us. <laughs> yeah, but Rats of Nim, I believe, was, I think, wasn't that, that was G or PG. It was, it was the same category. Yeah, but that was also the 80s, right before the whole, um, we have to start censoring everything because kids are going to grow up to be crazy people if we show them blood and, and stuff. Oh, that's <laughs> That was Kids turn out crazy when you take that stuff away from them and give them a strange sense of a reality that just doesn't exist. Oh, yeah, That's or, the or don't explain to them exactly what's the truth or consequences. Like, like don't if you don't explain to them what's happening and you just tell them or don't even say anything. That yeah. And I've had that happen in my own personal life. Like, <laughs> and, that, and that's exactly what I'm saying. Where I'm going, like you want to help kids. What was it? It was um. It was a TED talk. The this guy talked about his book, and it was like the top 15 things, uh, uh, dangerous things you want your children to do. Things like play with knives and that sort of thing. And I agree with them. You, he was like, he's like, you're afraid your kid, are gonna, you're afraid your kid is going to cut himself with a knife? He's like, of course he's going to cut himself with a knife. That's what happens. You know what happens the next time around? He's really careful with that knife. And if he cuts himself again, he's going to keep getting more and more careful until he can handle a knife. As opposed to some of these poor people out here that can't handle reality. I mean, there's just a lot of these guys where you and, and girls where you bump into them and you're like, where did you come from? Like, 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 like the people that eat meat but then are all horribly squeamish about animals being killed. It's like, where did you think the meat was coming from? The magical meat fairy? No, there was an animal at some point in time, and if you're eating a hot dog, something was killed for that hot dog. It's it, it's that simple. You know, it's like it's not a mystery. You know? That's what I'm saying. I'm like, you know, it just it, they're not being exposed to reality, and you end up going like poor saps. You know, I mean, I get it. There are sensitive people out there. I get that. It, you know, I'm not blind. I was a sensitive kid. I get it. Um, but at the same note, you have to be exposed to stuff, you know? <laughs> you just do. <laughs> and within a, a nice controlled environment, it could actually be a, it could be a learning experience. But I mean, it's like, sometimes I mean, kids are going to watch. I mean, heck, I remember sitting up late with my brothers and sisters watching R-rated horror movies and stuff, and I, while I... I don't remember being afraid or anything. I remember kind of like hiding my face or just kind of turning away. But I, I remember it, it affected more of my subconscious than anything. So I remember having some pretty awful nightmares after a, um, a nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> well, that would do it. Um, it, it. I'm not even necessarily talking things like slasher movies. I'm talking like um, there was a, a radio lab and they have, uh, and I, I haven't seen this, but I thought it was interesting is the um, the live feedings at zoos, and they were they were talking about in it. They were talking about not only the animals need to hunt and such, and they'd actually drop a live animal in with the, the the tigers or whatever. But you know, parents would show up with their kids, and the kids would 
start asking all the right questions. You know, they'd start asking them, well, you know, what was that all about? And it's like, well, that's that's how they eat. That's where meat comes from. They're like, well, I don't, I don't eat meat. Because of course you do. What do you think a burger is? That came from a blank. Yeah. It's just, it's just reality. It's not a matter of a political view or anything else. It's just simply reality. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, just, that just always got me. That's why, like in movies and stuff, like I'm kind of like not wanting them. I'm not saying make them horrible and terrifying and gory and bloody. I'm just simply saying, if something serious and real just happened, don't pull the punches. You don't have to be um, exploitative, but don't pull the punches. Well, you know. I, I think it boils down to the the psychological part of it of, of the. It doesn't have to be seen in order to be experienced. In a sense, it's like oh, true. it's like with I mean, how many of us were just like weeping in our in the movie theaters with Lion King when when uh, Mufasa died? I mean, you didn't yeah. see him. No, you didn't. But you saw the before and after. But there were no punches pulled. That's my point. That's that's a good example of what I mean. No punches were pulled. Something awful happened. They did it tastefully, but no punches were pulled. And that's what I'm talking is, is when they pull punches, you're going like, don't pull punches. Don't be exploitative, but don't pull your punches. Because yeah, I'm completely agreeing with you. That was, that's probably one of the best examples there is. It's one of the few times Disney really did something fabulously. Sorry, Disney fans, but they try to sell soundtracks more than anything else. And That was during the, the Disney Renaissance period. That was actually towards the end of the, t- the 2D animated um, renaissance it started, and it was the beginning of the Pixar influence oh, around that time period. Because after Lion King, that's when we got um, Hunchback of Notre Dame, we got um, Pocahontas, we got Tarzan, uh, Atlantis. Um, Unfortunately, that, that's also when they started doing the whole we have to get famous people in our movies to sell tickets. Well, that's what I was saying there. That was, that was like Lion King was getting towards the end of the, 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 golden, the yeah. golden Disney Renaissance. Cause, I mean, they were doing that before. I mean, because that, that had um, uh, James Earl Jones and Whoopi Goldberg and. Yeah. and um, um, yeah, but they weren't like they weren't like the highest, like making fifty million dollars off the film. They were like James Earl Jones. <laughs> he was he got paid a great, paid a pretty good penny. No, I mean I'm sure he did. I'm, but what I'm saying is, it's not like, for example, we're going to bring Mel Gibson into Pocahontas for no reason. Anybody could have played that part. We got Mel Gibson. Why? Because of his name. Did he do a decent enough job? Sure. But I don't think he was worth the money they paid, and he most certainly didn't really add to the story any. I mean, nothing against the guy, but that, that's my problem with a lot of this. Like, well, we can, only, we can only make the movie if we get big names. Like, why don't you concentrate on the story and the characters? Nobody gives, nobody gives a crap who's voice acting them as long as the character is there. Yeah, I mean, and all of that pretty so much was, was going on with... Um even like they started that with I mean with with um, uh, Little Mermaid. Um, we had Jody Benson, Little Mermaid, who a lot of people don't even know who she was. But I mean, I I learned of who she was because I loved her voice and and then found out that she was also um, yeah she was also um, uh, Tula in uh, Pirates of Dark Water. She went into, te- into television voice acting and stuff. And I was like, oh, cool. I like, started getting to know the voice actors and all that. And then she was that. Then went from Little Mermaid to, and I'm sorry, once again, Disney fans. I'm a huge Disney fan, but I'm blanking on how the order of the movies went. Then we got, let's see, we got. Oh, I love movies. James Bond. I can't keep the, the entire list <laughs> straight. That's There's nothing wrong with that. I, I used to know this, like, brain's tired still. But, um,. Then we got, like, Beauty and the Beast, then we got Aladdin, or oh, it reversed. Either way, uh, that's when they started getting more uh, known names. I mean, from, I think Beauty and the Beast came next, and then we had, um, Belle was Paige O'Hara, and Beast being, um, 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 crap, um, Hellboy. Ron, Ron Perlman. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Like Hellboy and the the actual Beauty and the Beast from the eighties. Um, 
him and then had Aladdin mainly with um with um uh, oh my brain is just fried. it's okay hun don't worry about it <laughs> Robin Williams and stuff at least with Robin Williams, you saw why they brought him in. Because they based that character so much off of his humor, you could see it. But some of these guys they bring in, you're like, they're just bringing them in just because. You know, like like one of the... Like he's like him and uh, Eddie Murphy doing Donkey. And also the dragon off of Mulan. <laughs> yeah, that could have been anybody, but he made Donkey. Yeah. That, that that dragon literally could have been anybody. That was an that's a completely forgettable character. Donkey was funny because it, it you could just tell he was required to make that character work. Yeah, the same with Mike Myers with Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's I'm not saying that you can't have big names. I'm just saying what's the point to bring them in just because they're a big name? Yeah, and that's that's actually a a, I hate that. a big point with a lot of voice actors now that well, even within the last five years. A lot of act, like the voice actors were angry. I mean, even now, uh, I think there's still a voice acting strike going on. Um, the the SAG uh, SAG people, Studio Actors Guild, and um, within like with just the past five years, a lot of the voice actors were just angry because oh, they were be. uh, parts that they could do with their eyes closed and stuff for going to these big name movie stars. And I mean, Rob Paulson talked about it, um, Tara Strong, uh, uh, like a lot of big name people were just saying how, um, how they just felt left out because while they were basically trying to scrounge for jobs, you had all these big name people who were already getting yeah. paid they already got their money. Just to wake up in the morning. Yeah, they already got their money. Um, getting offered parts where they're just like, well, and this thing is, they're like, well, it's not like they did horrible jobs. It's just that you see their characters and you hear this person as the character. You don't hear the character. That, they're that, not voice actors. They're just playing their their that, self as the character. That's what I'm saying. It's the <laughs> difference between most of Will Smith's movies where Will Smith played Will Smith. Mm -hmm. And the ones where he legitimately was acting like Ali or something, mm -hmm. where he play he legitimately was playing a character. Yeah, okay, <laughs> and and when he's playing a character, he's very good. When he's playing Will Smith, well, you better either like Will Smith the cartoon character or not like Will Smith the cartoon. Good, that'll tell you if you will like the character or not. Um, and I mean that's fine that they do that, but it's, but it's also like why are you spending millions of dollars on a name? Wouldn't you rather just put that money in your pocket? I mean, you you really think, okay, maybe I'm off on this. Is the American people that stupid that they'll only go see a movie because there's a name in it of somebody they've heard of before? That's where, that right there, I actually do know the answer. It's not the American people. It's the international people when they do stuff like that. Because international movie, or international crowds know our celebrities better than we do most of the time. And That's so sad. they will go to a movie if they have a recognizable uh, movie star. That's why, like, when we have the Avengers and stuff, how they make sure to include stuff for the Chinese audiences because the Chinese audience absolutely adores the American celebrity status huh. and the American celebrities. Weird. And that's why the movies, when they say the movie went over all the stuff because China contributes the majority, like the lion's share of the overall totals. And that's, so that's sad, it's Amer yeah, overseas. Uh, Audiences love American celebrities, and they recognize them because that's a part. That's Americana. They want to see Americana. Uh, that's a part of Americana. I want us to get rid of. I mean, really, who cares if someone's famous or not? Well, the investors do. <laughs> yeah, well, people making the money do. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it, I guess. Uh, anywho, um, thank you, everyone. Uh, this has been a, another Sunday morning sketch. Um, we'll catch you. We're out next week, aren't we? We're out for the next few weeks. Yep. Uh, we are going on pause for a couple of weeks.